All right, we're live. Happy Friday, and welcome to another episode of the channel CEO. Uh, kind of getting a like a complex, not a complex, but my notice my 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 children's friends. They don't refer to me as Mr. Lancaster, or even I used to be called Coach Kevin, Coach in Hockey. They all refer to me as Channel now. So when they walk in the house, they all say, "Hey, Channel! Hey, Channel!" So kind of getting used to it, I guess. But uh, anyway. Friday, we've got a, a phenomenal repeat guest uh, coming up for you. But before, before we get into that, uh, we've got uh, the M&A Roadshow happening next uh, Thursday, I think it is, uh, up in Newark. We've got an action-packed uh, group of presenters. It's a full day of education. So if you're interested in learning about MSP, M&A, and what's going on in the industry, uh, you're interested in, in getting uh, together with those that are really influencing or impacting M&A, in the industry, definitely uh, register for that. Just head up over to uh, channelprogram.com. At the top of the, uh, the homepage, there should be a link to register for the M&A Roadshow. Uh, second to that, we uh, launched the 2024 Channel Technology uh, Map and Report uh, over my shoulder here. And uh, we've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of downloads. Definitely check it out. 63 pages of uh unfiltered raw feedback from the industry and what's uh super cool is our next guest uh, again mentioned uh he's a repeat guest uh, he his uh company scored the highest uh in the communications category so uh so red uh came in at a 4.93 beating out i mean other i mean it's pretty impressive right they beat out groups like loop, loop communications zoom ring logics uh, 3CX, Ring Central, Slack, Intermedia, and Microsoft. So you know you're doing something right when uh, you are uh, rated, I would even say significantly higher than Teams and Slack, right? So with that, I'm going to bring our next guest up, Mark. There we go, Mark. How you doing? Good, Kevin. Thanks so much for having me on. And uh, I'll wow. react right away to your uh, being better than Teams. Off, it doesn't take a lot to get to be a little better than Microsoft Teams for all that they do for us. But thanks again for having me here. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, I should say we, the, the bar was set pretty low, but and nevertheless, you, you are you are victorious here. I'll, I'll share my screen so the audience can see what I'm talking about here. Right, so threads, uh, you know, right at the top um, with uh, your solution, uh, and then you know that's you know kind of rounding out kind of the top uh, top ten and most reviewed. Um, you know, so yeah, this a it's a getting to be a very crowded uh, marketplace. You know, communications, I think, uh, in general, I had seen some somewhat of a slowdown. Um, you know, prior to COVID, and then uh, I think COVID really kind of highlighted the uh, product category and the emergence, reemergence of the product category, and that you guys came on the scene and had just been taking the market by storm. So, so. Uh, I think we were talking maybe it's been 18 months or so since uh, I last had you on. Uh, so what has, uh, what has changed in the last 18 months with the uh, thread? You guys went through a rebrand, and then you had this massive coming out party, I think, at one of the last IT Nations, which was, was fun to watch. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the latest? Yeah, <laughs> you know, both a lot and a little has changed. Uh, what I say a little is that, you know, and I love uh, the communication angle because we think that magical service starts with great communication. Like we are, we, we are technical as MSPs, but really we are service providers. And, and the key to service is communication because you're dealing with, with humans and humans more than anything. Obviously they're seeking resolution. However, the path to that is largely driven by communication. Did you respond? Did you give an update? And so that's that's continued to be our our core thesis. So much so that we, you know, use the word thread, which is uh, used, you know, heavily in communications, email threads, chat threads, and that's why that that's that's what changed very little is our is our obsession about providing uh, a platform for great communication. Right. What's changed a lot is AI, and we could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, let, let's dive into it because. I remember you know, when, um, when you first had come on uh, the scene, I know this was 
I'm going to call it a passion project, partly passion project, because, you know, you were, you know, what's great kind of around a lot of these founder journeys or, or how these technologies start, they start out of frustration, right? They start out, they start out of, you know, solving uh, a challenge that's impacting your ability to get stuff done in your business, right? Um, so let's, let's kind of, let's retread or go back to, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about kind of what the, the main push was, why, um, uh, why'd you come out with the, the technology and then, you know, let's get into how AI is really, I mean, it has evolved quite significantly and certainly within the product, but, um, yeah, take us back to where, where you're trying to solve these challenges and then let's get into like really where, where the product is now. And that's a great framing. Kevin, um, you know, every founder, whether it's a SaaS company or it's an MSP, does come from some kind of founder insight. And, and oftentimes that is a challenge for MSPs. It's usually because I'm tired of fixing my aunts and nephews computers without getting paid. And so I decided to, you know, I, I have this craft and I want to start a business. And so I think for Matt and I, what we, so this, this is one of my favorite stories. When I, you know, I, I was at an MSP for five years, low level service desk. Um, actually, I started as an intern on the service desk. I spent five years there all the way to system administrator and then uh, left because I tried to innovate in the MSP and MSPs don't have a lot of room for innovation oftentimes because they're bogged down by operations, unfortunately. So I launched a startup and then came back to the MSP. So I was a rehire and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my favorite parts about that story is that when I joined, rejoined that company, they were using Microsoft Communicator to collaborate internally. And I was like, wow. what is this thing? It's like AIM for what is companies. <laughs> and so uh, Teams wasn't out yet. I, you know, I think Microsoft just bought uh, Skype at that time. So we rolled out Slack. And it spread like wildfire. Everyone dropped Communicator. We finally got to decommission those servers that were on-prem for Communicator. And it really changed the way people started to work. People were collaborating internally and working through issues and trying to, to resolve, you know, there was a P1 issue, there's an outage. Oh, this. The IP customer is complaining about something, and, and we just started to collaborate in a way that we, we never did before. God bless and RIP, Microsoft Communicator. Um, and that was, our, that was our founding insight, is that the way that people were working was very different than the way that the systems that MSPs have uh, allowed them to work. And so oftentimes, even though we were doing great work in Slack and resolving issues faster than ever before, we got the infamous... Hey, is there a ticket for this? Hey, can you update the ticket? Can you put in your time entry? And I was notoriously bad as a service when I was on the service desk, putting in time entries, but I was really good at providing service. Um, and I thought I'd be free of that once I became, you know, director of service delivery. And I wasn't. All that happened is now I got to chase people that were bad at putting in time entries and tickets. And so th that converged into what Thread is now, which is. We need to enable MSPs to have the right tools to communicate, to collaborate, to bring people together, to provide magical service and get out of ticket management. And that's a big part. That's why we say debt to the ticket. It, it just slows our business down. And, and that's not why we started this business. We're using tickets to bill and we're trying to use tickets to, to deliver service. And we fail at that. And it, it hurts our ability to deliver service and it hurts our, our margins ultimately. Yeah. yeah you know, the, so it's funny cause even, you know, front end of your website, you, you guys are, 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 are clear about death to the ticket, right? You know, and, and I think you're taking some of these, you're taking this communication medium to the next level, right? Because it's, you know, you're, you're in one hand, you're, you're reducing the noise, right? You get this automated triage, you've got the ability to, you know, automate the workflows. Uh, and then you're really pushing, you know, communication chat with customers. So you're kind of, you're kind of, you're early to it, but you're like embracing kind of this, 
this new world of automation and then kind of collaboration. But then you have an interesting, uh, <clears throat> interesting concept. Uh, I'd love for you to expand on it, but it's got an inbox for MSPs. Um, I thought that was a pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting approach and pretty interesting. You know, it's like one of those things where it's like, aha, you know, so once you, once you kind of get it, get it. And it's like, aha, but could you uh, kind of elaborate a little bit on kind of this concept of uh, inbox for MSPs? Yeah. It's kind of that feeling that you get the first day when you onboard at an MSP and you're told you can't use Outlook anymore and you have to respond to everything through the PSA. You're like, why? This sucks. Like, I, I can't manage my communication. There's no folders. There's no, I, I don't have signatures. I don't have, you know, these, these tools that are built for communication. Right. And, and back to this concept of we've used a billing system in order to deliver service. And we're telling our, our technicians to stop using communication software and communication is the key for service. Like it, it makes no sense. Yeah. And so what we realized was, you know, and, and our first product was just being able to send PSA tickets to the to Slack or to, and then Teams. And then what we realized was that's that was the root of the problem. They need a communication tool to be able to marry service and communication. We need to have an inbox view to be able to quickly let, go through your, your messages. Where have people responded to that I haven't yet? What's on red? Can I make folders for things and like group things like this is a VIP customer or this is a P1 issue. That's how communicate the like communication tools are made so you can communicate better. Yeah. And so that's what inbox is about. It's, it's taking the thread and, and thread is the, is the link between the end customer and the technician inbox is the technician view on those service threads that you get. Yeah. It's funny when you, when you put it that way, right? It's uh that's it, so true. I mean, in, in, you don't really think about it until, you know, in those terms, until the way you de described it, right? You're, you're telling, you know, the, the technician that, uh, you know, you have to use this billing tool, right, to communicate, right? And it's, it's not a communication platform, right? In fact, it's the exact opposite of a, you know, a true communications platform. And the legacy, you know, solutions out there, and, you know, they are, in a lot of cases, extremely legacy, right? Um, built on older technologies, it, it's hard for them to even contemplate, you know, getting to this point where they're they're accelerating communication, right? They're still you know, billing and and at best triage, right? Uh, maybe file share, maybe there's some file share in there, or whatever. But um, yeah, it's interesting. You guys came along at this point where it was like, all right, you know, that this is this is a major impediment to how productive. Everyone's talking about automation and productivity and reducing you know ticket times and all this stuff but they're all kind of still doing it the the old-fashioned way like kind of duct tape and band-aids and here you guys come along and again probably going back to the fact that you guys have such a high you know quality score kind of kind of flip the script and said wait wait we're doing it wrong you're doing it all wrong and i'm sure you know you kind of i think you minimized uh I'm sure the first product you come out is uh kind of the first stab at it you know and you gotta start somewhere but i think you minimize kind of the impact that you guys have had and in, in in this category specifically, um, I guess early on, like when you're iterating, is it, I, I imagine you're getting just a ton of engagement and feedback from customers saying, yeah, yeah, can you do this? Yeah, yeah, can you do that? Because yeah, they're probably starting to see like the power of this type of platform versus what, you know, how they're basically taught to do business previously. And the one thing that I think we can all agree on is that the communities in the MSP industry are just incredible. Once you, mm -hmm. once you are part of the MSP ecosystem, you're MSP for the rest of your life. We have yeah. user groups, we have incredible conferences, something like 2000 conferences a year. It, we, we really strive to learn. And the reason for that is because a lot of us have started an MSP because we were good at technology and we wanna learn how to run a business and we want to learn what does it take to to run that business successfully what, and we share that in user groups oh i found this tool i found this new way of handling it 
you know, her user pricing went viral across, you know, and we all left the time and material billing. Then on the service delivery side, we went from tiers to pods because that provided higher customer satisfaction scores. So the community has, has been incredible for us. And our first product was free. And the only thing we asked for was feedback. So that's exactly how we grew. Um, we just launched a, a beta of our magic agents and we had about 30 MSPs part of that beta. And the last session, the last sessions was this week. We have a morning session and an afternoon session to accommodate the time zones. And the question we asked everyone was, do you want to keep this going? And it was a unanimous yes. So we're keeping those sessions going. And, and I think you, you can't lose that. You can't lose because it, it's hard to build software for someone else's problem. The only way you can do that is, is being really in touch with the people that are experiencing the problem. And luckily, you know, our company, we have a good amount of ex MS peers working for us. We use a PSA for our service desk. We use thread. So we really try to make sure we don't deviate from that, but really it, it's, it's incredibly important to be in touch with your community. Absolutely. So getting at these pillars, right? You got, you know, communication, collaboration, and then, you know, customer satisfaction. Right. I guess gotta you have you have the potential to have a, a massive impact on all of those, you know, those three kind of pillars or three areas. Um I'm curious because again, you launched at a time where you know AI was just becoming the buzzword, right? And so you've kind of been in the middle of the AI wave. So instead, you know, you guys AI powered or you know, it's actually uh powered by AI, I think is the way you kind of described it on your site, but um so think, how important has that been in kind of development of the, of the solutions in automation, AI in general? You know, when we, when we started, one thing that we wanted to tackle, and because we were so communication focused, we thought our advantage is because we, we can see the communication. Why can't we extract data out of that? And so we tried to build our own models. God bless MSPs. Everyone is different different types, subtypes, categories, prioritization, everyone has their own way of delivering that service. And we, you're right, we, we, we launched before the AI craze and we started um, our lead of, of AI was like, hey, I don't think this model stuff is working because there is no one model. Let's try to use GPT. And it was like on version three before chat GPT came out. And we started to use it. We we're like, wait, this finally makes sense. Like we were able to categorize things and prioritize things. Part of that, when ChatGPT came out, we, you know, Microsoft invited us and, and did a case study about us because of the, the early work we're doing. Obviously they love MSPs because MSPs sell their product. So we were at a good intersection there. Um, but how we've been thinking about it has evolved tremendously. And the way that we view it, right, is like the future of service and, and the future of service desks are going to be AI service desks. It's either there's going to be AI agents that are working alongside human technicians, human agents, and the human agents are also going to be superpowered by AI because they need to, they need that leverage. Like we can't scale the way that we are. It's hard to find talent. It's hard to get customers and it really sucks to lose them. And so we view this AI service desk as the next frontier. And, you know, we were, we were thinking about it heavily, like, how does this fit into our strategy? And what we realized when we're saying that's a ticket, if you still use tickets for billing, right? Like a parking ticket, an airplane ticket, your billing is based on your ticket. But when we say death to the ticket, it's death to the ticket from that service experience. And what we've learned is that AI helps to do the ticket management so you can focus on the service delivery. You can actually provide value, right? Instead of like, hey, this took me seven minutes, but because I had to write a time entry and manage my ticket, now it took me 15 minutes. Like mm -hmm. sometimes doing the ticket takes more time than doing like fixing the thing. And so that that's how we think about it is that we, our value is this communication layer and to provide these exceptional services experiences and we use AI to extract your cost out of the service delivery. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you do, you end up having a material impact on, you know, not just the time, right, on, on the desk, but you know, again, we talk about those, those pillars, right? It's communication and collaboration and customer, you know, satisfaction. And so ultimately, yeah, you're driving to that higher level of satisfaction. You're reducing cogs. You're, you're making technicians more efficient. You're freeing them up to do really what they should be doing. And a lot of, a lot of products talk about that. A lot of products talk a big game about, uh, we're going to have a 50% impact on your technician efficiency and a lot of them do other things. But in this case, it's, you know, they, they, the automation, the AI in it is actually having material impact on their ability to get things done because it's, you know, you're taking a lot of legwork out. Or you're taking a lot of that, yeah, that just wasted time. You know, you're essentially kind of what you described, right? You, you have maybe seven minutes working, you know, uh, an issue, but you're spending another seven, eight, nine minutes, you know, writing it up. Right. And so you're taking, again, you're having the ability to take, you know, that, that is, that's significant. That's 50%, that's 50, 60% increase in productivity. Right. And that's just on one individual on one picket. So, you know, you, the force multiplying effect of that could be quite dramatic. Right. Uh, not just on, you know, PL, but then customer satisfaction and, you know, response times or what have you. So, so you guys have been, you know, extremely immersed in this, in this space, been kind of on the forefront of AI. Uh, what, uh, where do you go next with this, right? Because you've obviously, you guys have done extremely, uh, you've done an amazing job in, in these kind of, in these pillars and this category in general, right? Where does, where does this end up going? Because it's a kind of a solution where, you know, you could spend hours and hours kind of whiteboarding, you know, the different directions it can go with this as a core kind of almost platform. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good observation. Right. Some of the hardest things in a business is not the lack of places to go, but it's, it's the amount of focus you can maintain. Um, so we started with the assistive AI side, um, which is helping engineers find that leverage, automatically prioritizing, categorizing, changing the summary or the title of the ticket, automatically writing their time entry, recapping it when you escalate. And today, our accuracy on AI prioritization categorization is over 85% and technicians clock in at around 60%. We're doing 800 million tokens a month with wow. AI. So that that's been wildly successful for us. And, and that's, that's a great example of where we're helping MSPs get leverage. It's hard to run an MSP. It's really easy in the beginning because you have a few girls, guys that are, are delivering service to a few customers. And then all of a sudden you're hiring dispatchers and IT coordinators, and you need a service delivery manager. And, and you get all of these, this overhead, this non-billable overhead that eats away into your margin. And it's like, you know, where I was at in the last, in the MSP, we had like 10 IT coordinators just to try to help us manage it. Obviously that the company was large, about 300, uh, people by the time I left. Um, and so that, you know, we, we, fit, we feel like we put a really good stake in the ground there. And so our next frontier that we, I previewed just now, Magic Agents, is this concept of, well, what if I can have virtual agents that work alongside me? I want to take a little side tangent. I think another great category um, is RPA, the mm -hmm. roosts of the world, the PIAs, and their growth roost has been growing massively and and we know that you know customers are loving the, the capabilities that they get with it. And I've been having this interesting conversation with MSPs, which is well the technicians aren't running the automation. Mm. And it's like it makes sense because they get paid the same amount. Why like who cares? That there's no incentive structure. Mm. Why why would I run this automation? Like, I know how I've been doing it. I'm just going to do the way that I've done it, right? And so when we think through that, it's like, okay, it, MSPs are starting to get more better at automation. We've had RMMs for a while. Now we're getting, we're finally getting some love in the RPA world for tools that just dedicated to us, the Roost and Pia. But this last leg is, well, how do we connect it? How do we connect the dots? What, what's the missing part? And the radical thing that we've done that I think folks have been scared to do is we went customer facing. We built that cust the bots, the 
the chat and, and took that big risk of saying, okay, we're going to pioneer this new channel of communication. And that's just the beginning of the journey for us. We want to continue to expand the channel of communication. And so our next big frontier is magic agent, it's agentic AI. And being able to understand the intent of the request that the customer is asking, being able to ask the right questions that are necessary to complete something like, okay, you're looking for, you want to install software on your computer. Great. Like, what are you looking to install? Or, you know, you just hired a, a new person and you forgot to add them to an email distribution group. Well, what's the name of the person and what distribution group? And so by being so customer focused and leveraging our power in communication, we've built an agentic solution that gathers that information automatically, goes to get approvals, because again, approval is a function of communication. Can you reach out to the right people to get that approval? get the approval and run the automation. Mm. And that's our next frontier because that that's what changes the, the business model for MSPs. It does. Yeah, no, that, that has a material, I mean, yeah, that, that, is, that is materially changing how the MSP operates, right? Uh, and that's right. it's materially impacting kind of the self-serve model. Uh, it's taking out you know, maybe the way you kind of describe it is, is it's uh, behavior change, right? Um, you know, there's no incentive in it, and it's hard to change people's behavior. But, but this kind of, you know, and I'm sure that that's part of like why there's there's so much training because you have to put a ton of training data. I'm assuming in to get to get this thing to no, where it, no, okay, no, that's good no. to hear. So that's that's the big leap in these LLMs is that they've read the whole internet. They've read petabytes of data. So, True. and MSPs are selling other vendors' products. They're not selling their own, like, like a SaaS company has its own help center, right? right. They're typically right. supporting Microsoft, Adobe, Slack, Google, you know, maybe some bespoke solutions based on the vertical that you're focused on. And most of those companies already have everything online. So it's True. extremely smart from the get-go. And we've built tools that help you to analyze what are the most common requests by your customers? And so you're able to, to kick off these magic agents. And if you don't have a particular intent, you still have like this, this ability to say, okay, is it impacting you? Is it impacting the whole office, the whole company? When did this start? Right? And so you can, you, you can gather a lot of that information, even if you can't fully automate it. But we're able to, to accelerate that tremendously. We do not train on the MSP data. The, the one thing I've learned is that every MSP is different and it's it's just exceptionally hard to, sure. to find that. patterns. Yeah. yeah. So in that case, I mean, you've got, you've got the, the mass, the whole of the internet. And then at that point it's, it's, it's prompts, right? It's just taking them through kind of that, that process. Um, yeah. And, it, and that, that sounds like that will have a, a massive, almost disruptive, I mean, that is disruptive to how, how MSPs do business. And you can, you can extrapolate that out to, you know, increased efficiency, increased margin. Uh, Service gross consumer. margin. So absolutely. Yeah, that could be, that could be pretty profound. Um, man, I, yeah. So where you guys are going is, uh, that's why I love doing these damn things, you know, you know every so often. It's, it's like the, the, uh, yeah, the sky's the limit from that standpoint, because you are, you're dealing with that, you know, the, the entirety of the internet, the data that is out there to help, you know, effectuate, you know, even some of these small, you know, challenges, the minute challenges that are just, you know, repetitive and, and time consuming. And uh, that's pretty massive. It's pretty massive. And I will say, you know, it, even though the, you know, the LLM models have read all of the internet, I think the value that we, I, I still say we, when I talk about the MSPs, um, I'll always be an MSP -er at heart is that it's, it's how we've set up their environment, our understanding of every environment, the nuance of that environment. Are you on a Sonicwall, Palo Alto? What's the VPN? Are you on Azure? Where's your you know, hosted desktop? That's what we've done for them. We've created a, a tech environment. And that's the pieces that we're focused on in, in helping to bring that bubble that value that the MSP drives to the agent 
and saying, when you say I need to install VPN, you're not giving them SonicWall instructions when they're on Palo. Right. You're not giving them the raw, like, you're not giving them a Citrix URL when they're on, you know, Microsoft VDI. And so that's the unique aspect of an MSP. And one thing that we've, you know, there's two big things that I want to make sure uh, I mention is that when we look at all of our MSP websites, the big thing we say is technology partner, your technology partner. That's how we market the MSPs market to their customers because yes, they're going to handle the service desk, but the value they provide is being a technology enablement and empowerment firm. The dentist office obviously wants you to help the, the front office if they get locked out. But what they're looking for is how do I get the best service so that I can get the EMR going? I'm looking to expand and open up two more dental offices. What's the right architecture? Oh, there's COVID. Now everyone needs to work remotely. Can you give me a few DIs? Like that's where we provide value. But we're bogged down and oftentimes get fired because we missed the service desk. Ticket. Yep. We need to change the amount of time we're spending on these tactical things and go back to providing that value of being a technology partner, enabling yeah. our customers to do better things with their businesses. I couldn't agree anymore. I mean, it's uh, those that aren't embracing kind of this new way of automation, um, you know, just leveraging the automation to improve kind of service delivery, the business, the margins. I mean, you have a material impact, but at the same time, to your point, you know, it's giving you the ability to be more than just the MSP, right? And I think that's that's going to be the that's you know that's you know going back to that technology report. A lot of the theme throughout that report is, um, you know, the stack is the stack, right? We kind of demonstrated that, right? And what separates a lot of MSPs today is just all right. I'm 155 per per seat per month, and you, the other one's 157.50. Right? It comes down to price. Where I, I think it's going, it's just yeah. No, we're, we're we're managing more than just the stack, right? We're you're you're we're, we're basically your your technology enabler. You're, you know, we're, we're working with you from a holistic standpoint, not just managing this kind of stack. Yes, we've got all these great solutions, and we're we're automating service desk, and we're making that much more efficient. But you're you're actually able to go beyond and you know and, and expand, and get back to where. Um, and I think that's the that's the balance that the MSPs need to start to strike here moving forward is that it's um you know, they gotta get back to being a, a real solution provider, real technology partner versus just, you know, here's my stack, you know, here's the monthly costs, call me if you need me kind of a thing. And we always struggled with that balance when we you know, when we were at the MSP. And it's like we if we could only make more capacity to go reach out to that customer to ask them what challenges are you having, how can we help you? then you're talking about greater retention. You're talking about upsell opportunities. You're talking about things that in, empower their business and enable your business to keep growing. And so it's like, how do you get rid of these things that are, are, are holding you back? And so we talk a lot about empowering people to do their best work because we view IT as the, the enabler, the empowerment of people to do work. My, my wife is a nurse practitioner. And, you know, I always joke that uh, the medical industry is now spending more time looking at computer screens than patients because they're constantly trying to log things and, and right, trying to, to follow a process. But you want technology to work for you. You want it to be, you want it to get out of the way, but empower you to do your best work. And yeah. you need to get rid of these little issues and yeah. actually well, Mark focus on the empowerment. I'm 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 pumped where you guys are going. I mean, just the progress you guys have made uh, over the last uh, I guess 18 months or so since we last spoke is is nothing short of uh, remarkable. Um, Thank you. Imagine we we get together uh, 18 months from now. I mean, I can't even can't even imagine kind of how far you can take this. Because again, you have so many different directions that you can take it. But but um, you know, it's having a material impact. And and certainly, if, if you haven't gone down this path, you need to you need to get to the uh, Need to get to these guys. I think the uh, the site is uh, getthread.com. Uh, is that the best way to reach out and connect with the with the org? That's right. And if you want to shoot an email, it's magic at getthread.com. Uh, 
we do believe a lot in magic. You'll hear a lot of a, a lot of magical terms. We're also going to be at IT Nation doing some pretty awesome things. As always, radical is a part of our DNA. So uh, stop by and and have some fun at our booth. Awesome. Well, I'll be there as well. So I'll definitely stop by and and uh, check up on you guys. So. Uh, well, with that, thanks for hopping on a second time. And and uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to uh, the countdown for the next time you're on and see all the cool stuff that you guys are doing. So thanks for uh, joining me this week. Thank you so much, Kevin. And also, great work on what you guys are doing with the channel program. Love that we, we finally have someone that's kind of like the gartner of our industry and, and helping us to to find the right tools. That, that That's always been a challenge when I was there. So really happy to to be here. Uh, well, I'll I'll take it, and you're welcome. So, <laughs> cool. Thanks, Kevin. Right, Mark, appreciate have it. a great one, Thanks, buddy.